The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, Basil Chapman. Hi, everyone. Basil Chapman, Tiger Technicians. Oh, my pleasure to be here on this, uh, I should know it, right, 7th day of July. And we're looking at a Dow, Dow 9, S&P is unchanged, just about at 0.47. I'm showing the 10-minute chart here. <clears throat> it made what I call a right arm extension. That was this morning between 9 and 10. It ran up and then at 10 and turned around, saw it on its way down. This could be one of those patterns that we've been looking at instead of the cup. This is the arch formation. So we'll look into that a little further. Let me give you numbers. The 20... Uh, 89.75 low that was made around about 8 o'clock. Um, that's going to be very important. I've drawn in two trend lines, and this is the trend line that's kind of key right now. My thinking is that the market is just going to kind of meander for a little while. Maybe this afternoon it'll pick up steam if the volatility index remains under the, it's at 1485. If it can get down to the 1460 to 14.50 level, we could have another bounce to retest the day's highs. We'll talk about all that as we move on. So um, what we're looking at here, and I, one of our, one of, um, well, one of our dinners has had a, a great uh, opportunity to get a big gain. I see a white wave has just been a, there's a takeover uh, offer and it's up huge. Let me just have a look here. WWAV and uh, WWAV. Congratulations. Oh. Man, that's beautiful. This is leg E in the weekly chart at 56.25, up $8.83. Can't remember who it was that uh, wants, oh, Dan and Dan and Dan one or something is taking them over. Yeah, wow. That is huge. Nice move. And we're going to just, we haven't seen that for for a little while now with, with the, the very well-known companies uh, starting to take over others. Um, the consolidation that we would be seeing in different areas, you know, I'll talk about right now. There are phases that I like to look at during, um, there's a period where markets sometimes kind of go sideways for a while. And during that sideways period, you'll find sectors that were lagging terribly become the favored sector and they go back to the lagging sector. And then sectors that were absolutely on fire start to pull back. We saw that with the NASDAQ top uh, 10 uh, stocks there. And the, in the food sector, what you saw is these were the defensive stocks, mostly the defensive stocks, like a Pep, Pepsi, I think Pepsi right now. Yeah, Pepsi is uh, at an all-time high. CDE, it's E in the uh, monthly. Let me just move this away right here. And it's E in the, in, e in the monthly, E in the weekly, E in the monthly. Huge move up. Um, uh, we were looking at Johnson & Johnson. And it's still acting very well up at almost all time, yeah, all time highs just a few days ago, just in the whole what we call the uh, defensive area. And, and, and foods are in that area. Hershey, S H Y, uh, was that the one taking over or being taken? There are Hershey's up. So we are seeing this rotation where all of a sudden you get fewer and fewer companies because there's this takeover binge that goes on. Very important. Um, in market cycles, it's how car companies went from three, four, five, six thousand at one point in the 1920s and 30s. And yet, in Massachusetts alone, we had hundreds um, to the top three. Okay, that's what happens over a period of cycle. That's a huge cycle. So it happened in the banks. Too big to fail. Aha! Too big to fail. Um, came struck me yesterday. Uh, the whole thing with Hillary Clinton. Too big to fail. It's just real simple. You can have all the hearings, you can have anything you want. That's the answer as far as I'm concerned. All right, so let's get on with the uh, the markets. So the S&P, the Dow, what did I say, it was down about 11 points. No, now it's up to uh, 17,221. The, the Dow has to break 18,002, and it has to do it real soon, real soon, because it's the ceiling that's, that's, that's just giving it... Uh, the S&P and the Dow and the number of the other sectors, both in the daily and the weekly charts, uh, you want to see that broken. You want to see that pierce. Let me just move this up here to show you exactly what I'm talking about right there. 
You've snuck above it, but you haven't broken in the S&P. The S&P needs to go to 2121. Right now, it's at 2101. But on a shorter term basis, it needs 2114 to say that that V-shaped recovery is now at new recovery highs. That's really important. Support is at 20. Uh, 92 to 2086. All right, short term. Okay, so the S&P is uh, up 1.87 at 2101. Um, those are the parameters I just discussed. The uh, QQQ series is right now at 108.47. Nice move, but it's given it mostly back. It did go above the high, and that was important. The high of the 23rd of 108.79, it went to 108.86. It isn't holding it so far. And just the market is just right now a little tentative because of what's going on with the hearings and things like that. So let me I, let me finish this and then I'll talk the politics of politics. Um, the GC gold is pulling back a little bit. It's down 12 at 1355. I think that this is just a short term top. I think it's going to consolidate. You might use more time than price. That's what I'm thinking. And the daily, the weekly chart, remember yesterday we looked at it, this inside Chapman Wave inside track repellent zone. It's working like a repellent zone right now. And the peak D top that was made in the in the 120 minute chart is at 1355. My thinking is that 1355, you could quite easily see a move to 1342, 1336, the nine period moving average. No problem there. It's just it'll be time more than price. Um, now there's something else I want to look at. You look at the, the oh, uh, SLV, which is the silver iShares, shares made a peak D making a peak D today, I believe. And that also says that it's just snuck in the weekly chart above the 200 period moving average of 18.27. So at 1869 down 41 cents it has a little way to go. Just a consolidation. That's as I'm seeing it at this particular time. TLT. TLT has had a spectacular move. Even now, it's only down 28 cents at 142.28. But this leg e in the weekly chart, I suspect that it's going to be tough to go much higher than 142 to 140. Well, let's just say 143.30 to 140. I don't think it will touch 145 in this move. I think there needs to be a little bit of a consolidation. And we'll check to see. Between 141 and 140 is the first level of support. But you can even go to 138, 137 just to fill in some of the gaps and to give it a little bit of time. No problem there. Um, now, the other thing I want to look at is crude oil, CL. Crude oil at this particular stage is down again, keeps getting repelled with the nine period moving average, down 52 at 46.92. Have a look at this. This is the, the SPY and the uh, USO. The USO is the United States Oil Fund. So what we've had, I got the five-minute chart. I did a real quick thing on it while I was doing uh, Tommy. Uh, Tom, Tommy, I was sitting in for Tom O'Brien, and I was working with Tommy. He did he does a great job? Great, great interviewer and great. Uh, he really, I, I think I respect the way he looks at markets. He's got a nice mathematical way of doing it. Very nice. Um, I, he's got a nice comfort zone now. Uh, he didn't think he could do it, but boy, I think he does a great job. So we're looking at the SPY five minutes, made a peak E top, pulls back, goes to a D, and then a spike E and an F uh, at the opening this morning and the news at 10 o'clock. I don't know what happened with the news. Um, and then you had the same thing, a peak F. Uh, it's really like a rogue wave moved to the upside in uh, the uh, USO, United States Oil Fund, then a very sharp pullback. And now it's trying to bounce off that. So we can see uh, crude oil. I just, I think it's just stuck in a range right now. Uh, slightly lower lows and slightly lower highs. That's all. Only thing missing that I've done now is the DXY, which is the, uh, the dollar holding quite nicely. It's up 8 cents at 96.14. High level consolidation. It's just trapped between the 90, 95.70s and the 96.50s. I'll be back. Today, many commodities are trading at relative lows. And now you can take advantage with EverBank's new limited-time, five-year, market-safe currency comeback CD. This indexed and U.S. dollar-denominated CD offers 100% principal protection and is based on the equally rated performance of currencies of Australia, Canada, Chile, Mexico, and South Africa. These five countries are especially rich in commodities, and the respective currencies are poised to do well should commodity prices begin to recover. Keep in mind that no APY, a periodic rate of interest, is paid on the CD. Don't miss out on this innovative new financial opportunity. CDs must be opened and funded by the upcoming July 14th deadline. To apply online and learn more about the CD, including product terms and disclosures, visit everbank.com forward slash TFNN now.
This advertisement is sponsored content. EverBank is a member FDIC. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN. Dot com now. Basil takes your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Internationally at 727 445 1044. Hi, folks. We're back. Dow's down four. SB's up one. And I just wanted to show you with uh, Tommy what I was doing is the VIX index in the 10 minute chart with the Chapman methodology. I was talking about the plumb line. I can use a plumb line to get the move up to equal the move down back <coughs> to the starting point. And that the volatility index had reached a low at about five this morning at well, what did I think it was? Was it 1491 or something? 14, yeah, 1441 at uh, uh, five minutes to five. And then it started to move up. And it went to what we look for in the Chapman Wave methodology you look for the lowest, the most identifiable trough. That's the little V at the bottom. And you merely count each successively higher peak until you get to the fourth highest peak. That's where other things can happen, but it's also where you can have your sharpest decline. Well, what I'd said to Tommy was it came back and it broke that level. And the rule of thumb in my work says that it should have, it took, it broke it in three bars quicker time. So that's saying that the speed, speed was, was in effect. And the rule of thumb in the Chapman wave is that if you, you have one bar, maximum two bars to close above the left side low, in this case about 1441. Well, it went down to 1434 at 10.35 this morning, uh, and then went to 1433 at 1045, but it closed at 1444. What was the low that we were looking at? 1445. So that says, uh-oh, You've got now, if you don't do it within the very next bar, you're in trouble. But if there is going to be a, um, a rally, that rally has to take out key uh, levels of resistance. In this case, it's either the nine period moving average, this black line here. Oh, wait a minute, is that, that's the nine? Yeah, that's the nine period moving. No, that's the, yeah, that's the nine period moving average. This is the 18 right here. And it has to, or it has to take out a previous peak of importance, and that would be that little one at 9.15, at 15.09. Well, it's had a very strong move from the 14.34 uh, level, 33 level, I'm sorry, um, of quarter to, quarter to 11 this morning. It's gone all the way to 14.94, and it's trading right now at 14.90, and that's why you've seen the inversion, ESU 16, here. That's the opposite, right? We've pulled back. The little trend line's held so far. You take out uh, 20, what am I looking at? 2092 as support, and you're going to quickly touch 
uh, 20.89.75 will go into this area here. And you've got until 10 minutes past 12. So if it's going to break down, 10 minutes past 12 is where this better hold um, or else that VIX index will be climbing even higher and the S&P futures will go lower. But this is also the period where there's going to be a real nice bounce that uh, the e the VIX index, VIX.X, is going to reverse underneath this black line and start to trade in the 1465, uh, 1470 to 1465 area and give the market a breather and start to move higher. So those are the parameters. Now, what do you do if you're trading? Let's just say you're trading the... Uh, uh, and, and let's just say you did go short. While we were looking at it, had little bounces. Hey, that looks like it's in a fan. You were short. Real simple. If you were short, um, I would at least let's say you one position. One position means that I would I would make a profit no matter what. Okay, I just make whatever I'm short at. If it's twenty ninety seven fifty, I would say twenty nine twenty ninety seven fifty cent gain is your stop no matter what. Ha ha. But. If it starts to break down, I would lower my stop. If I had two positions, one would say that at exactly 2089.75, I'm done with one, and the other gets a lowered buy stop and see if it breaks and starts to move a one to one move to the downside. If in fact holds very nicely, I say, okay, the one I'm out, I'm the other one I'm going to tighten up, and make it real tight. It'll be that trend line around about 2093.25. So that's the way I'd be trading it. So uh, let's get out of this. Okay, now it's politics. The reason why I thought of that just now was that I was looking at the XLF, which is at 22.51 up five cents. It's really struggling. It too has a trend line. Everybody's got trend lines right, you know, coming in three, four, five times hit. They've got to break those trend lines for this move to really accelerate to the upside. So what about politics? Number one, there is no question. I, I, anyone who's objective has to say that the weight of evidence um, that we as lay people have gotten to uh, be aware of uh, in the email scandal, it's not the scandal. They, the politicians wave their hands here. It's this is what you've got to be looking at. It's the link between this and the Clinton Foundation. To me, that is the big, big thing. Okay? And then... I'm in the shrugging my shoulders, saying I've been here before. I've been all the way from the from the, the Nixon, from Watergate to all the others. And what happens is there's always a scapegoat. You watch how um, uh, Comey is going to be suddenly suddenly become a scapegoat for everything. And I, the Democrats only needed to want, do one thing, and they're going to keep doing it, and that is talk about Donald Trump. And as far as I'm concerned, Donald Trump should be talking about only one thing. There's no wall. There's no nothing. There is the economy, because people understand it. The, the economy, they, they, it's been drilled into everyone that the economy is horrible. I'm saying you are, you are 400 points from an all-time high. The economy is not that horrible. Yes, the job growth is terrible, but I also think the job growth is not being measured properly. I've spoken to so many people who have three jobs, four jobs, five jobs. They're in all these different things. I don't think the traditional way of looking at jobs is, is being um, uh, uh, calculated. It's calculated in the old way, and I think there's a new way, and that's, that's a big problem. Okay. But in fact, the Republicans, as long as I can recall, just have... If there's any problem, they resign, they step down. They just, they do that. If the Democrats have a problem, they get together and then they, they talk about something else, something else, something else. Hey, man, know the plan. It's like trading. You've got to know your plan. And the Republicans don't know their plan. I don't know what's the problem. It was the easiest thing in the world. It was theirs for the taking. You just had to talk about the economy and... Um, People were looked at uh, Trump and said, "Hey, he's a, he's a he's a billionaire. He's done well. He must know about this stuff." Uh, you know, that's, that's, I, remember, I'm talking about the politics of politics. Couldn't care who you vote for. It's your business. I, I just I'm looking at it as if it was an analysis of the market, and I'm trying to do analysis of the of the political parties. And also, whenever I'm doing this, I'm saying, "Geez, I'm wasting my time here because nothing really changes. What, what am I thinking here?" Wasting time. Um, things just, it's, it, it's just a, the super tanker just moves on, no matter what. Okay? So, 
the real question has to be, um, how do the how do the Republicans come together? In fact, I laugh because I think in many ways the Republicans are the Democrat Party. They had 17 candidates. They had 70 people with different ideas. The Democrats had two people with two different ideas, and basically, in, in the long run, they kind of almost the same thing. Um, so it's funny. I mean, I look at it and I laugh. I say, huh, very interesting. And um, I know that when I have uh, conversations, as I did over the weekend and every, every other weekend, with people who are, um, are staunch either Bernie people or staunch Hillary people or staunch Trump people, um, I know that no one actually changes their mind. What they look for is reaffirming uh, what they consider evidence. So it's fascinating because it could be real simple. The Republicans just keep saying, economy poor, we've got the man for it. And Democrats should be saying, Trump is all over the show. Trump is all over the show. I'll be back. Dow's down 10. S&P's Platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning, where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you will lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Technomental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN is excited to offer a brand new piece of market scanning software unlike anything the industry has ever seen. John Logan and his team have spent years developing their market profile tools to finally be able to release the TAS Profile Scanner Plus. And right now, you can get a two-week trial absolutely free just by visiting TFNN.com and providing us your name and email address. The TAS Profile Scanner Plus is the premier market profile-based scanner in the industry, powered by the acclaimed has proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner is a standalone desktop software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Within three minutes of signing up, you can have the software downloaded and running on your computer with a complete roadmap of market indicators and inflection points to trade off using the TAS Profile Scanner Plus. Sign up today and try this amazing piece of software by visiting TFNN.com. Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming, see high-definition video, giving you crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full-fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Andy Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high-definition audio and video. Tiger TV, exclusively at TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. We're back. And just wanted a couple of follow-ups. Oh, I did get a couple of uh, uh, texts and emails and all sorts of things. Uh, um, but provoking a little conversation there. Um, well, let me just do this. Um, within the context of the two parties... Uh, when, when, uh, how can, let me, let me just try to phrase this in such a way that it's real simple. I want to make it, the theme I've always said, if two words is the best, 
if you can get to three words, it's a little bit much. Four words is way too many words. The general public can only take in two words, uh, no, well, three words maybe, no new taxes. Um, uh, make, make America great, but a make America great again, too many words. And I'm not sure yet what Hillary Clinton's theme is, but it's got to be just a couple of words and it's got to be said over and over and over. People don't realize in the advertising world how repetition is so important. And one of the reasons why when, you, when you're in public and you hear people talk about their favorite uh, the topic or whatever it is, you'll hear that the majority of time, if you listen to enough uh, um, conservative and uh, um, we call it progressive uh, radio or TV, you will hear those words come back at you from whichever side it is. So very seldom do people change their opinion because, you know, it's, it's just there's something ingrained about the way you are and that's your bent, your leaning. But at the same time, I think that in terms of parties, you need to focus in on something so simple, like two words, three words, and you've got to say it over and over. And then you've got to produce the evidence all the time of what you want to do to, to fulfill that. It's really important. It's just very, very important. So I'm going to be talking a little bit more about it tomorrow. There's some other things that I want to discuss. I'm wondering if you're going to do it today. Tommy suggested that maybe I get started. Um, um, yeah, I like that. I'm not a crook. Uh, that was, oh, yeah, yeah. you got to have those. It's too many words. One, two, three, four. But people do remember that five. <laughs> okay. Um, so well, let's get back to the nitty gritties here. And the nitty gritties say that, I'm going to do this over again because I did this with Tommy. He brought up a great thing. He said, what, what, what are we looking at here? What kind of inflection? I like to say inflection, deflection. In other words, what inflection points, meaning what points are like barriers that if you break out, it means one thing. What would be a deflection that it just couldn't, uh, it couldn't push through? And for me, it's real easy. And I've been telling my subscribers <clears throat> to my opening call, one of the reasons we went long yesterday in the Dow is because there was a chance between now, between yesterday and Monday afternoon that this is the opportunity for the Dow to finally pierce the 18,000 to 18,020 strong resistance. A close below 18,020 opens up the weekly chart to make leg D in the 18,168 level or higher. It means that the week, monthly chart of the Dow goes to a buy mode. Uh, if we can go into 18,352, a leg C to the upside. So we are within three, 400 points of major uh, implications for me. Why major? Because if we make a leg C, in the Dow monthly chart, I'm expecting a D, a higher high. And that takes us months. It takes months to achieve all these things. So that's it. If there's a breakdown and we take out yesterday's low by Monday, that's yesterday's low of 70, let's call it 17,730. I'm going to say if the Dow closes under 17,700, that's going to say, uh oh, you need more time before you're even able to break into that upside resistance. Now, I'm going to show you two charts that I think are very important. The 120-minute um, chart just missed making a D at 18,003, went to 18, 17,984. There's that cup formation so far it's holding. If this cup formation takes too long, I have to start thinking, hey, this could be a cup failure and it becomes an arch. So that's very important. Give, let me give you the parameters. By the end of the, this afternoon, the Dow needs to be back in the 17,940s. That's going to be really important. If it's not, and instead it's down in the 17,008, um, it's under 17,900, uh, more likely 17,880 level below that, that's just negative. And now I look at this, and the left side, right side price time, time match says that by tomorrow the Dow should be tackling 18,002 to 18,016. That's this pattern here with the left side, right side price time match. But the bigger one says that by the 27th of July, the Dow should be testing its all time. No, is that the all time high or the 167? Yes, the 167, 18,167 high of the 20th of, uh, the 20th of April. So it's got a long time to do that. I don't want time. I want price. I, I want speed. I want this to power higher. 
I also, I like bull markets. Bear markets, maybe you make more money if you're right. Uh, but bull markets, um, you know, everybody's pleased, everybody's happy. This is the, we are 400 points from the all time high. And this is still one of the most hated bull markets I've ever come across. I couldn't even tell you how many people uh, say to me, what about Brexit? They don't actually ask me any more about the market because I, they know that I'm looking for higher highs to come. But they, uh, they say, what about Brexit? I say, what about Brexit? It's an 18 month to two year phenomenon. Anything can happen within two years. Uh, we could have uh, one of the Great Depressions or we could be in a mega bull market. Uh, who knows? I mean, things can happen, right? Okay. So this is the other. Uh, this is the V shape, a little clearer. And look at the MACD, strong, not great, but strong. And the stochastics at 88 percent. I think that's tremendous support at this particular point. So that says that the trend line of 17,800 on a worst case basis shouldn't be broken now. We should be trying, at least attempting, to break all these resistance points. All right. Enough with that. Now I want you to do something else. I want you to look at a couple of questions. Um, uh, LYG Lloyds. Ooh, you keep looking at uh, LYG Lloyds. Uh, you're looking at the, the dregs. This is a Lloyds Banking Group uh, PLC trading at $2.61. You know, I, I, I'm loath to actually recommend Deutsche Bank or uh, LYG, anything that's trading. And uh, I mean, Deutsche Bank's in the 12, it's not in the single digits, but I, I don't want people trading on that. When, when stocks are making lows, remember, the rule is. Stocks that make lows tend to continue making lows. That's all-time lows or 52-week lows. Stocks that make highs tend to continue making those highs. So I, I'd be, I'd just be real careful. All right. So I'm just going to say, yeah, Deutsche Bank. Maybe there's a little pop-up coming, but you could lose 20%, maybe quicker than you can make 10%. I'm just, I'm just being real cautious. I, I, I'm going to avoid that. Really, it's a, uh, no. I, I, I just have to say. Um, you got to be careful. Now, when I look at this, uh, JP Morgan, so I get the questions about the f financials. JP Morgan is holding okay, but that's all. It's just holding okay. It's really not giving any good signals. Wells Fargo, which is usually one of the better ones, same thing. Bank of New York Mellon, which is one of the best, it has uh, much shorter duration pullbacks. It really has not not major declines, but pullbacks, even the 45 level to the 32 level. That wasn't like some of them that got cut in half. Um, and it's holding OK. It still doesn't look great. I, I'd be careful with the banks. I don't see any reason. There are other areas that seem to be doing well. We've got some low price stocks that are actually starting to do a lot better, the low, very low priced ones. So that's that. So that's Adam. Oh, Julie wants to look at hell. You know what? I don't think I've, I've, I've updated it. No, I haven't. Uh, Hal Burton, I'll update in the break. I'll be right back. Basil Chapman, Tiger Technicians out. Now's down 11, S&P's unchecked. If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock and option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date, 
active trading information that will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. Until recently, it was almost impossible for the average investor to hedge against currency risk in Europe or Japan. For a bold trade on Europe or Japan that protects against moves in currency, trade HEGE -E or HEGJ, two times currency hedged leveraged ETFs from Direction Investments. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This segment is brought to you by TFNN. Test drive all the newsletters for free at TFNN.com. Hi, folks. We're back and we're looking at Halliburton. I did the notation. Actually, I did the notation, uh, continue the notation because I hadn't updated it. So this is a very interesting thing. This is in the oil service area, and it made a low back in 2008, and it went to peak A, B, C, D, E. This is a, this is a very unusual move here, but if you keep looking at the MACD, you'll see the MACD did not cross negative in the monthly chart. So the, name, the notation uh, just continues, and there wasn't a down arrow on the E, even though it pulled back pretty sharply from the 32s to the, I'd, I'd say it's probably 24s. Big, why? Because... Uh, the technicals were still holding strong enough, and it was a very quick move to the downside and then back up. And then what happens is it goes F and G, and that is the uh, camel hump, the double camel hump that I see in the stochastic, that M-shaped pattern, lowercase m. See that? And on that right shoulder there is where you get that extension, a right arm extension in the Chapman wave. Pulls back to a trough A, then a trough B, holds the 200 period exponential moving average from the high that was made. So it's gone from the uh, at 10, 11 dollars, let's say, to about 57 in July of 2011. So that's two years. Pulls back, has an H pattern, retest, makes a lower low. And there's, here's the rule of thumb. That lower low has to close above within two bars. And that's very positive. And then it has to take out the previous highs. That's even more positive. If it does that, it goes peak A, B, C, D. And then you get the same kind of right arm extension. Patterns repeat in most charts. Um, the characteristic is of the stock. They usually have patterns that repeat in, in many time frames. And then it goes to peak F right there. So it goes all the way from, the, uh, from below 30 to 74. It has more than a double. In July, again, July of 2014, pulls back, and here we are in July, and it's made a, making a leg A, maybe a peak A, um, having gone from the 74 area, 75 area, down to 27, an exact 50% decline. Now it's got about one-third rally, and we're going to see if this rally can hold. So far, the technicals are way better than they were in any of the previous moves. So Halliburton, on a more intermediate-term basis, I think it's showing us that it has signs to say that it could consolidate here based on the peak E in the weekly chart, which is still very good technically, and the trading range should be between 40.50 and maybe 46 as it doesn't get to a new uh, recovery high for a little while. That's what I'm going to say. And based on the lower lows and lower highs in the daily after the peak D, um, I'm thinking that, yeah, it's just kind of stuck. I'll give you the narrower parameters. 45.40 is resistance. And if it takes out the low of uh, 41.17, the low of the 27th of June, then it's going to trend, go to this trend line here. And that will say in time, it will be 40.80 would be the next level on the downside. Should I short it? 
it's a real tough thing for me to say. It's not clearly a short win. It is going to go down about uh, two, three points. I think it's going to go down two, three points. So do you want to have a 5% short? I would say that if you're going to short, you've got to short it right now at 44.26. But the fact that it ran up this morning when the market was higher, I'm going to say to you, I, if you ask me, would I short it? No. I would not short it. I'd rather be having patience to say, you know, I think I'd rather focus on buying it. So you could short it at 44.25. If it gets to 41.60, you're on the right track and you can have your entry point as the buy stop. And just wait patiently because you. Re I, I would prefer, prefer to be buying it even though the weekly is at a peak E. Um, so if you want to short, it has to be a short term. I'd rather use a put, use a, a 45 put and just treat it as if you have the stock short and let it be. Uh, 150 bucks, uh, it's better than putting up money to short this right now. Okay, so that's that. And another question was here, IBB, no, oh, MUSA. Oh, I hate someone mentioned that once before. MUSA, the gas stations. Oh, I never did this as a chart. This is one. Now, I love these charts to look at. I hate them when I'm thinking of buying. Why? Because this is one of those that it's MUSA trading at 73.97, down 54 cents. And the reason why I say I hate this is because, look, if I put my up arrow here, the most obvious low bar, right? I merely count each successively higher P goes A, then there's a whopping move up B, but it holds quite nicely, and then it makes an inside A, so that's not a big deal, C and a D. And then that D starts a brand new move to the upside. But wait a minute, I've got to always look at the stochastic and the MACD. Okay, that says to me I can, I can give this a choppy ride that it's given us. So he goes, um, new A, a new, is that a penny difference? No, I don't think so. Let's check it out. 65, 65. So he goes A, B, C. Well, it should be already a G slash C. So what, well, let me explain that. A G, a G slash C means that the alternate count is to be conservative. I'm just continuing the letters D, E, slash A, F, slash B, G, slash C, expecting that there could be a D. On the other hand, I want to be ready so that if it is a G and it starts to fail right here, it's very easy for me. I'm confirmed that it's a G, that at 73.90, where it is now, if it even touches 70, uh, right there, 71, 71.50, I'm confirmed that that's a G. If it holds nicely, I can say, be careful, at any point you can go higher. So, okay, I'm going to say, Jane the Dan, um, if you are already long, based on this A, B, C, D, A, I'm going to call this brand new B, I don't know why not. Look, A, B, C in the monthly chart, A, B, C, yeah, it's a D. So, uh, this is what I'm going to do. I don't know if you are long, but if you're long, I'd hold it, and I would... I would like it not in the next three, five sessions. I don't want it to even get into that candle. At 71.86 was the low on the 28th. So 70, between 70.50 and $70, if it closes under that, did I say 70? I meant 71. 71.50 and 71. If it closes below 71 in the next three four to five sessions, I'd be real careful with this because it could take a bit of a time out. It could go down to the 70, between 70 and 68. At this particular point, it's holding well. I, would I buy it? No. I, in this case, I would have to wait. I'd have to wait in three, four days. If you want to remind me again, I'll look at it again, but I think it's a little toppy short term. So I'm looking at it as a little toppy. I would not short it. I'd wait, but waiting to buy because the monthly chart and the weekly chart are still very strong. All right. Um, now I've got uh, Dow's down 30, S&P's up down 229. So let's go back to the 10-minute chart. Remember what we were looking at? Left side, right side, price, time match. And there it is. That's the plumb line, right? And we got to it. No, let me do this correctly. That's the plumb line. That's the move. That's It did it exactly. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. It did it to the penny, to the exact left side, right side price time match with a plumb line right there. Isn't that interesting? Now, what's the rule of thumb? We've got to wait to see one bar, if it closes above the low of 20.89.75, it's gone below, it's gone to 20.89.50, I think. Yep. So now this is the bar that says you've got to close above. 
And if you close above, not only that's not good enough, you've got to be tackling the uh, ninth period exponential moving average resistance at 2096. And if that is successful, you can go to the previous peak, which is all the way up at the top. I don't think that's going to happen. I'm, in fact, going to draw what I think is going to be the case. I think we're in a choppy, choppy mode right now, and that's the best case. Another H formation with a retest. Okay, this is the final break, and then we've got a short segment coming up. And in that short segment, I want you to do a couple of different things, and I will just get to prepare them beforehand. So, Basil Chapman, Tiger Technicians Hour, Dow's down 28, SP's down 2. We'll be right back. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of The Trader's Edge, heard daily at TFNN.com and author of Mastering Probability, a daily investment and trading newsletter service that I send out each morning by 8 a.m. My morning newsletter service covers exactly what the markets have been doing since last night's close, providing you with an edge on your trading day ahead. You get actionable trading ideas, including the exact entry, stop, and profit targets. Plus, I'll teach you the patterns and hidden market correlations that will make you a better trader. As a subscriber, you'll gain access to my 90-minute money management workshop, where I'll teach you the secrets that'll save your assets. The bottom line, I've got your back, including a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the type of analysis I provide each trading day by signing up for Mastering Probability today. With nothing to lose, this is an offer you should not pass on. Mastering Probability can be found under trading newsletters on the front page of TFNN.com. In quiet markets, investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full custom capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. Learn how to trade options with Swim Lessons. Brought to you by TD Ameritrade, Think or Swim. Next on TFNN. Hi, folks. Don't forget, coming up with Kevin next. It's just Danny's Associates. It should be a fabulous show. This is a perfect time for listening to options. So I had a couple of questions before I wanted to go to what I, I, I intended. The VNQ uh, are REITs topping out. So VNQ is the Vanguard REIT ETF making this double top. I spoke about it the other day. I'm going to be watching it real carefully. I think on a short-term basis, I'm calling this an F. This is like with a little hat on top right there i'm just i'm going to put it in because that's what i'm thinking um it's real clear it's very positive if uh at 88.29 down one if vnq vanguard reit etf uh goes above 89.68 no if it goes to 90.50 that's very positive i don't think it's going to do that i think it's in, in a consolidation right now which goes with the iyr which is also this is at a peak D and it's pulling back sharply today. I think that the REITs are 
going to have a little bit of a pullback here, and then the market takes a couple of days to sort it out. Then you find your your, your leaders. So um, that's that. The next thing was um, that was Sarah. Judy wants to know ESV. That's another like Transocean. <clears throat> Now, this is a different pattern altogether. I don't find ESV attractive at all. ENSCO, PLC, I, I, there's nothing there. Unless you want to buy it, uh, the low is 9. So if you can go to $9.20 $9 and buy it with a 15, with 25 cent stop, and then if it runs back up in the channel and it goes towards the 10 and a half, 11 area, you, you get out of it. You don't have to short. You can just wait again to do Just keep doing that. I don't see anything yet that's attractive. Hope that helps you there. Um, MU, uh, you know, this is an interesting stock. MU, if I can just get that correct. MU. M, quick, quick, quick. MU. So this is my, Micron. Why is it not notated? Micron Technology, the daily is made a peak C. I, there's no other way I could count that. I spent a little time on this just recently because I was looking at the semiconductors. I don't quite understand why it went to a peak C and then it sort of failed. It hasn't really failed, but it hasn't gone even close to making the D. All right, the question about it and the semiconductors, that's a good question. <coughs> the semis are just holding here. I don't think there's too much to see. But at 56.35, if the SMH can go to 57.30, I'd be very interested in it because it would look like it's going to go to an E in the weekly chart and really help make go towards the, the uh, monthly, helping the monthly chart. But if uh, SMH just takes out the low of yesterday at 54.82, it's going to 54.50, I think it's going to retest the lows. So right now, I'm right on the cusp. I just I cannot make a decision about it. I need a little bit more evidence. Um, I think those are the questions. So I hope those are the questions. Yeah. Okay. Now, real quickly, uh, as we're about to go, look, GE, fabulous move. It's made a new recovery high. It is, in fact, in leg C in the monthly. Now it can take a bit of a breather if that uh, weekly chart is making a cup formation. It's, it, it, maybe it can go a little higher, and then it takes a little bit of a breather. But so far, this is excellent action, and it's helping our markets. IBM, most of my Dow Quartet stock. Nice action, but not great. So it's holding very well. Triple M had fabulous action, went to all-time high. Now it's just pulling back a little bit. I still think it's an outstanding stock. And UTX is recovering, but it needs a lot more work. So I've got a mixed picture in my Dow Quartet. They looked great just the other day. So we're about to wrap up. You're about to go to your swim lesson. So let me just do this. Dow, I-N-D-U, the, the, the numbers to look at. A close below, uh, it's at 17,898. I would say on a short term basis, a close below 17,820 in the next day or two is just not good action. I want to see some recovery by this afternoon. I want to see a close in the 17,920s. I really wanted to see a close up in the 17,950s. But I'm prepared to accept the 17,920s. I want it in the 17,900s today. But that resistance is a major resistance level. We need to break out. Watch the VIX. It's now at 1505. If it goes to 1520, market goes down again. If it starts to pull back into the 1480 or lower area, this market has a very nice close on the day. Hope that helps you. Check out my opening call. I think you'll find it very interesting. It's some nice picks. I'll be back. Um, yeah, I'll be back and I'll see you tomorrow. Thank you. I'm not sure about this afternoon's interview. Otherwise, I'll see you tomorrow. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today.
This is TFNN.